let me just set that up. Okay, so um, we're just going to change the format in terms of how we do in our Zooms. We're just going to have a training session that's going to be um, on the second Tuesday of every month, um, just to make it much more relevant um, and to give people the time that they need for their income, income producing activity. Um, I think most of us are where evenings are essential for that. Um, so we're just going to have a little bit of a structure to it so that we're going to have um, our team um, utilising one of those Tuesdays in the month for doing a live Discover Arbonne on Facebook. And that will be the third Tuesday of every month. Um, and what we'll do in the chat afterwards on WhatsApp is actually get a structure over the next few months so we know who's going to be doing it. Um, I think it's really important that we're all actively doing DAs that are, you know, that are out there. Um, it just makes us more confident in, in delivering them, gets your face out there, gets you seen by your customers. So it's really important for us to ensure that happens. Um, what there is on the Hello Future page, which I think is really good, is every Tuesday at 8 o'clock, they are doing a live DA. And obviously, I'm sure at some point we'll all get asked whether we want to be involved in that as well. Um, but that gives us some consistency for, again, if we've got you know customers or prospects that we want to share the DA with, we know that there is going to be a live DA every single Tuesday at 8 o'clock. So that we'll be able to share with them say yeah I'll just jump on you know this Tuesday we've got um, a couple of our colleagues that are going to be doing a presentation on Facebook add them to the group and obviously they can have a listen to the DA straight away um, the, the one other thing um, did everybody see those short videos that I put up um, yesterday yeah Kerry oh, I can't see you or hear you so I'm assuming that you've seen them um, Michelle did you you've seen them already haven't you the four I have, yes, yeah. 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 We've talked about. Okay, um, so I did not get a chance to today, but I'm going to definitely redo mine um, just to make them more relevant to the fact that obviously I'm now a mum and life's a bit more different. So I'm just going to make mine a bit more personal. So I'd really urge everybody to do their own because they're incredibly powerful. Um, I'm talking with three people at the moment who are interested in joining the business, and I sent those four videos just on a text message. Um, after they've had the initial one-to-one -one and we're trying in the products um, to, to get them to have a look at the, the, the effectively the key points on the DA and um, they've been really really impressed with the fact that it's short easy manageable chunks of um, information that they can listen to in and around doing whatever they're doing you know they don't have to dedicate a specific amount of time out of their diary if they can't get to a DA so essential for it to be you I mean I know up until this point um, a lot of people have been sending out other videos of other people which is great that's not a problem at all but it's way way more powerful if you're the one who's prospecting and you are then the one who's going to be delivering the DA it's going to get them to connect and relate to you way way more so I'd actually ask everybody over the next couple of weeks if they you know make it their mission to get that information out to us share it with us you know we'd love to we'd love to um have a look at them and be there to support you with them um i promise you you know once you've done one it's hi soxy i don't know if she can hear me can you hear me hi yeah um we're just just a very very quick recap we're just talking about the da's um and um how we're going to change them slightly for our team so um i'll get the dates over to you at the end soxy Okay. Sorry, um, I missed that. We <laughs> so were just on. talking about some changes with the DAs um, and how we're going to, the, when they're going to be available, how we're going to approach them, and then what we're going to do ourselves. But I'll talk to you about that straight after. Okay. Um, okay, so the main, main reason that I wanted to do this call today was because um, Soxy and Michelle and Emma, obviously were all with me, when I won the opportunity to have a coaching call with Oldie Slareno. Um, now this woman is an absolute powerhouse. So it was amazing, amazing. I finally got to speak to her this week. Um, and she is a formidable woman. She's obviously was responsible for sponsoring in Sue Cassidy into the business. 
who then obviously sponsored into the business um, the whole of the UK team effectively that isn't any of the internationals you know so um, just the the whole of the UK is in just one of her legs of the business she's got over 50 MVPs in her downline 5-0 um, which is pr pretty impressive sorry success line can't call it a downline anymore it's a success line so in a success line she's got over 50 MVPs which is incredible she's been in the business for 11 years and I got the opportunity to speak to her while she was at her um, lake house which was very beautiful she just showed me where she was sitting on her deck looking out of this beautiful lake um, and she was brilliant really amazing we had a really frank discussion she asked me lots of questions about me and the team so I spoke about all of you guys um, and I, I just wanted to say, look, you know, I want you to tell us what we need to do to get where you're at. And it was as simple as that, really. Um, she looked at our business and what we're doing at the moment and in the nicest possible way, picked it apart, you know, constructively. Um, she used a really lovely analogy. So I talked about the, the people that are in the business and the growth that we've currently got. Uh, and you know the promotions etc and she used the analogy of what you're doing is like pulling a band-aid off the arm off your arm really really slowly and you're feeling each and every little hair as you're pulling it off so that will be the same for everybody in the team because of the pace that we're setting our businesses now obviously you know absolutely you have the opportunity to crawl um you know to crawl walk or run with this business absolutely that is your prerogative the issue that you have is and this is from her words is that if people crawl and don't see themselves making money quickly relatively quickly then they lose interest and they lose hope um so she said my her number one objective um, for being an executive national vice president when she takes on a new consultant is to make their story great And I thought that was brilliant. You know, she said I don't want them to have a lame story where they're going to say it's taken them six years to get to national vice president You know where they've been in the business for a year before they become a district manager I want to make their story great. I want them to know that I, as a sponsor. I've done everything that I can Hi, Harriet she's listening um she said i want to know that um that i've done everything that i can to make their story great so she said uh, she really asked us to look at the the processes that we're doing with our business now obviously this isn't going to be for everyone but i'm pretty much figuring that the people who are coming on the calls are the ones that want to be successful in their business you know you you guys are wanting to see growth in your business um, and in doing that, we have to get out of balance a little bit, which is absolutely fine, as long as you're prepared to do that. So she said, you will have late nights, you will have long days, you will be fitting this in and around a full-time job, but it's short-term pain for a long-term gain. You know, she said, you, you do this for a short period of time, or your alternative is to be wrinkly and poor. <laughs> I just laughed. <laughs> I like, love that wrinkly and poor. I don't want to be wrinkly and poor. So I really want to learn what she's got to say. So we're ripping a bandit off really slowly. Um, her objective with any new consultant joining the business, firstly, she sits down with them and she says to them, right, this is what I expect from you to do in your business. I expect at least 10 to 15 hours of income producing activity a week at least one workshop at least one da that's what she says to them um if they go mm, i'm not sure i can do that then she'll say well that's fine but this probably isn't then the business for you because i'm not going to be able to make you successful if you can't commit to those sort of numbers so you know we'd love you to join as a customer and if you want to tinker around with it and, and literally you know get a bit of pocket money then absolutely come on board and do it your way. But if you're serious about this business and you wanna make money, this is what you're gonna to have to do. So straight away, day one, she's setting it out from the, from the offset of what is expected of them. 
Um, and if people are, you know, if people, if it isn't for people straight away, it's better to know then rather than you investing hours and hours in terms of t time and training um, to get them to where the point where you think that they need to be when actually they're not prepared to put the work in straight away. So before you've even signed them up, that's a conversation that you need to have. Really get them to understand if they want a proper business, they have to treat it like a business. If they want to earn a bit of pocket money, then absolutely fine. Let them you know, come on board and play. Play with the business, was what she said. So let me just have a quick look at what she said here. So we don't want to rip the band, we want to rip the band-aid off really quickly. Okay. So for her, all of her new consultants, she is launching four business launches in the first 10 days. She does this for two reasons. One, to get huge momentum happening within their business straight away. Um, two, because they then learn how to do a presentation. They get confident because they're so close together. They are um, not forgetting anything in between. At the moment, we do four a month. And in that period of time of a week, you know, a lot, as we all know, a lot can happen in a week. Um, so you tend to lose momentum and have to start and pick it up again. Whereas if you do four, I mean, she does sometimes four back to back, like one, two, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Like she says, you know, the key thing is to get them as close together in those first 10 days that will start to get momentum for them. Um, and they'll learn it and they'll feel much more confident. But what it also does is sets that precedent. You want them to be doing, you know, it sounds quite a lot when you say it like four launches in the first 10 days. You want them to be doing four workshops in a 10 day period. You know, you want to be doing one to two workshops every single week. And that's all that it is. So again, we just need to forget about if we want to go down this road, we need to forget about what we had before. Then new consultants coming on board, they do not know any different. So we shouldn't limit their potential by setting them up for um, what we think that they can succeed. You know, a lot of people, a lot of new consultants come into the business and absolutely fly in her business because she sets them up and she says, right, you know, to start making money, you've got to get at least a district manager because that's a stepping stone. But actually, real money is obviously when you get to area manager. So I want you to become a district manager within two months. She, you know... Two months is where she gets all of our new people into district manager. She gets um, she doesn't ever, ever like to have somebody get into a, on a, a month as a 1,000 PQV only because that then means that they'd have to do 5,000 in their second month. She says, right, let's split it. It just makes more sense. And Kerry and I were talking about this the other day, you know, set them up for a strong um, district, district qual. You know, scraping in at one 1,000 makes it a really big month the next month. So set up for success straight away. Get them at least 3,000 in that starting month. Get a bit of momentum, one of a consultant on board with them, and then finish on 3,000 um, in their second month. So I'm, I'm just for, if anyone on the call who's not sure, in terms of QV, for a district manager qualification, you do only need 1,000 PQV to get into qualification. Um, and to complete it, you need 6,000 QV, which is over a two month period, or you can do it over three months, um, which is 7,500. Now we never ever want to complete over three months. I mean, if it happens, it happens, but it's, it what makes so much more sense to, to actually have massive momentum for that two months less QV is actually required over that whole entire period. Um, so always look at the qualification period as the, the two month period. Um, and that's how she does it, she sets them up. They're already then in massive momentum. They're already working at that sort of pace. They'll have a consultant that comes on board with them within that first couple of months because of the level of activity that they're doing. Um, and then obviously as a new district, your job then is to build a team of people just doing exactly the same thing as you. You know, all that there is, is building blocks of 2,500. That's all that this business is. So as a new district manager, you're responsible for a block of 2,500. And each and every person that comes on board with you is responsible for, a, for that block of 2,500 too. Okay, so if you start viewing it like that, 
Um, in terms of numbers, that only means four people, just four people as, an, as uh, managing an area. You know, that's exactly what we had until obviously Leslie, um, Leslie obviously took a side step. We had four people that were managing their 2,500. Now, really, for that to become then a region, it only duplicates by four. Okay, so we're only going to have 16 people, 16 people working their business, working on a monthly basis for them and their team, 2,500 QV, that generates enough volume to become a region. And then obviously for a nation, it's 64 people. So it's not actually a lot of people when you think about it. And directly, um, you know, I could be responsible for sponsoring four of those or 64 of those. It doesn't matter. It's just having that volume of people doing the same thing. So she said that's what, you know, is the most important thing straight off the bat to get them to understand the building blocks of success in this business. And I've done a training on the building blocks of success, which is on our um, This Is What We Do page. Um, so if you just type in building blocks, it will come up for you. Um, and that just goes into a bit more detail of what I've just summed up in the, in the last minute there. Um, but she does that straight away, literally day one. You know, they have a clear understanding of what their objectives are and how they're going to get there. Um, she said area manager is the most difficult stage. Um, so we've got obviously a couple of area managers that are going to be popping up very shortly on the call, which is um, Kerry and Michelle. Um, she said it's the trickiest one to, um, to get to. Um, and then it's the trickiest one to learn, obviously, how to get to region. She said once you get to region, actually, it's very, very simple to get to nation. <laughs> I'm not sure everybody would, would agree with that. But um, she said this is the trickiest one uh, purely because it's a massive, massive learning curve. She said she was on the phone to Gordon Fraser when he was an area manager. So... Um, for those of you who are on the call that are not sure, Gordon Fraser is um, in the top 20 income earners. He is um, responsible for bringing in um, Ian Dunning into the business and therefore Sarah Dunning and her entire, in, entire nations as well. Um, so, yeah, he's incredibly successful in Arbonne, but he was an area manager um, under Old East. And he would ring her every day going, you know, it's just not working, it's just not working, you know, I can't, can't seem to get there. Um, and he would be making it very much all about himself. Um, and she said, the key thing you've got to do is purely just work with your people who are in your business, just make more area managers in your business. And it sounds really obvious, but that is what we need to do. So, you know, for me now, I need to work much more closely with Kerry and Michelle to ensure that they become areas. And then their job is to work with their directs to get them up to districts. It, it's, it's, as we know, it is a really quite a simple structure, but it's just putting that time and effort into that. Okay, so we obviously talked about um, the fact that we want it to be region. And I said, yeah, I want to be region before Christmas. And she said, well, do you want to be or are you going to be? And I thought that was a really interesting thing for her to say because um, she said, you know, I want, she said, I want to go on the, the MVP challenge this year. I'm not going to. She said, I'm not, I've not had enough business in my central. You know, that it hasn't happened for me. Um, but I want to. I still want to go on it. But I'm not going to. I'm not doing enough to do it. And I said, that's really, you know, it's really interesting. We can all say, or oh, we want to be something um, but the reality is we need to put the work in and the time and effort into actually creating that she said view your um, you need to view your date that you're going to complete to the next level whatever level you you guys are going to be going to next as importantly as the day that you get married in meaning you know you're setting the date you don't really care who turns up for the wedding you're, it's going to happen anyway um, you, you're going to plan everything around that day. You're going to make sure it actually happens and it doesn't matter who else is going. And I thought that was really interesting because often we'd be like, well, I'm just going to, you know, wait and see what happens with my team. And, 
if my team want to do it, you know, then we'll do it. But it is irrelevant. If you are gonna if you are gonna promote and you're gonna put the work into it, it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. And I, I thought that was really interesting, really interesting point. So she said, you know, you need to be telling me that you're gonna be a region on the 31st of October or you know, whatever whatever you decide. You need to be saying a specific date and doing everything that you can, working back from that date to ensure that you are gonna get there. And I was honest with her and I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't think that I have done that. So if everyone's got their pen and papers, um, I just want you to have a little think now um, about the next level that you're wanting to prom promote to and when you want to promote to it by. So whether that's six months away or, you know, Christmas or October or November, you know, whatever it is, just write it down. Um, I am going to be a whatever you are, you know, whatever is the next level for you, district manager, area manager, regional vice president, whatever you want it to be is your next one by 12 o'clock on the 31st, 12 o'clock midnight on the 31st or the 30th, obviously whatever month it is that you're going to complete and the month and the year. So write it down. Okay, right. So, does anyone want to share with me what they've written? Hello. Hello. I'm going to be an area manager by midnight on the 30th of September 2017. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so when's that September the 30th? Yep. Love it, love it, love it. Soxy, let's see yours again. I know you're on mute, so I'll read it out for you. A bit closer. Okay, so Soxy, decide. DM by Christmas, by midnight, the 31st of December. So just, you're gonna write now, I know it sounds ridiculous writing this thing. I am a district manager on the 31st of December. 2017. Emma? I am going to be district manager by the 30th of September 2017. Ooh. Hell yeah! Love it! Woo! Okay, Fab and so, um, Michelle? I'm going to be an area manager by 12 uh, midnight on the 30th of November 2017. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Lovely Harriet, I don't know if you've got your sound on. Can you hear me, Harriet? I don't think she can hear me. Okay, not to worry. Right, okay, so brilliant. So that's the first, the first thing is actually writing it down and committing to it, deciding that you are going to do something and continuing to write this down. Like she says, you've got to write this down every day and start to believe it, really believe it because um, there's no point being really wishy-washy about it because it won't happen. So make this part of your daily routine that you're going to write this down 10 times in a row. It really will help to reinforce your belief in yourself. You're doing it. Um, but actually what you need is a bloody action plan. You know, you need a plan working back from that date. So, you know, looking at your date you've got there, work back to the day that you're going to be qualified so what is the date that you're going to be in qualification now obviously we, we talked about this before so we've got two months of qualification period yeah that is really what you want to aim for um, for district manager guys it's 6,000 qv so 6,000 over a two month period so step back from wherever you want to be if it's september october november whatever two months and then put the date down that that will then be. Okay, so if you just write that down.
And it's really good to start, you know, get you really thinking about it. So if you, some of you guys are saying end of September, some are saying end of November. So let's just use September as an example. So we'll have the whole of September and we'll have the whole of August um, for our months of activity. So we've got this month to now to get the momentum because obviously all the work that you do the month before shows up in the following month. So this is the month now we want to start really, really hitting it hard, prospecting, getting products out, doing business launches, getting everything where we need to be so that we have a really, really strong, in this example, August, and then obviously we can complete in September. So working those numbers out now, let's just do use district manager because we, all we need to do is duplicate by four, obviously when we're looking at area and then four by when we're looking at region. So who thinks 6,000 sounds like a big number when they think, just be completely honest, do you think, oh my God, that fills me with dread, you know, the thought of doing 6,000. Okay, so let's break that down and it, you will then think, oh my God, that really isn't a scary target. Now bear in mind, this is you and your entire team. Now you might be a team of one at the moment, um, but don't worry because you're obviously with doing work like this you're going to build your team quite quickly even if it is just customers because remember you can maintain as a district manager with no other business builders in your business you know remember it, it, as an as a number it's about 1500 pounds worth of sales across the whole month lots and lots of district managers maintain just on their own so don't worry about that at all but over that period of time, with this massive momentum that we're going to be building, you're going to pick up consultants along the way and customers and preferred clients, you know, and it's all of those things. I'll just get rid of that from there. If we go, we'll come back in on this same ID. Um, so, um, where was I? Where was I? Yeah, so, right, let's look at it. So, 6,000 QV, if we're building that over, this is really basic maths that I'm going to do here. So two months, let's just assume there's 30 days in a month for ease in this calculation, because actually it works so perfectly. It works out that you and your entire team as a district just need to do 100 QV a day over that qualification period. That's it. Um, and when you break it down like that, it doesn't really then sound like a very scary target when you've got a few of you building your business. And it's the same, obviously, for you girls who are wanting to go area. You know, you've got a two month qualification period of 24,000 QV, okay? If you get two district managers that actually want to complete in that same period of time as you, that already is taken care of half of your QV requirements, yeah? So, because they obviously have to get <clears throat> 6,000 over two months, there's two of them, 12,000. That's half of your requirement that you need, which leaves you then with 12,000 QV, which is 200 QV a day for you and your entire rest of your business, all your other preferred clients, all your um, other clients, and your other consultants and your consumer consultants. 200 QV a day on top of you working with two people that wanted to go to district manager. And obviously for myself, you know, if, if we just equate that into the bigger picture of region um, and I look at something like that with me and um, Kerry and Michelle, for instance, you know, Michelle and Kerry are going to go into qualification um, and complete. That's 48,000 QV of 96,000 QV. That's half of it already done. And the rest is then to pick up from all my rest of my customers. And even that is only 400, 400 QV a day. So you can see by breaking down these big numbers into little daily targets, they actually seem, does that seem less scary to everybody? Yeah, a bit less scary. Um, but the key thing is actually to have a plan. You know, whatever that is to you, that might even not be the way that you want to do it. You might say, look, I just want literally just to get business builders on board with me and I don't want to mess about with sales. You know, if that's how you want to do it, then obviously that you need to break down your QV, but you need to have it on paper as a business plan, understanding what you're actually going to be doing. Because that is, you know, 
view this as a business and you will get paid as a business. So work back from then. Um, so if you're thinking about going to qualification in July, um, sorry, in August, then work out what your QV is going to be this month. If you look at it and go, well, actually, there's literally no way I'm going to be able to do that based on the level of activity that I'm able to put in at the moment, then adjust your goal. You know, adjust your goal and put it in line with the activity that you're prepared to put in. That's all you need to do. You know, it might take some people, people just want to pooter along and they're happy if it takes them 10 years. That's absolutely fine. But if you want to get cracking and earn some money with it, you know, you're going to have to dig deep and get on with it straight away. Right. So that was just sort of um, a very simple way of, of starting to look at your QV. And she said at the beginning of every single month, what she does, rather than what I do, so I do this on a monthly basis. Can you guys see this? Yeah. So I put um, me in the centre and then I put all my directs and then I put all my, um, all their teams that are fanning off from that. Now, I was like, yeah, this looks really super impressive. You know, really impressive that. But the reality of it, it, you know, they are all connected to me, but the reality of who's active makes this a completely different picture. So do this with your organisation. If you don't yet have any of these people, just make blank dots. Can you see how I've got some blank ones here? Because they're people that are in my mind who are going to be joining the business that haven't quite yet committed, but I know that they're going to join. So if you haven't yet got legs to your business, then draw legs and put people in them, even if you haven't got names for them. Create circles, put question marks, you know, create what you want your business to start to look like. Because honestly, in doing so, you're putting it out into the ether, you're, you know, you're telling yourself what you are going to achieve in your business. So draw it out and look at it. Um, but if you have got people in it, then actually look at it and go, right, who is active? Who is active in my business? Highlight who is active. And then you're going to work from the bottom up. Whereas what I normally do is, she said, is, is not the best way to do the business. I'll say, right, this month I'm going to go for 20,000 QV. And then I'll work down and work out where that QV is coming from. That is not the way to do it. She says, work up from your business. You know, you are putting limiting beliefs on these people in the business because you're assuming that they don't want to do, they don't want to get involved. She said, have frank and open and honest conversations with all these people in your network at the beginning of the month and say, look, you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to become an area manager, regional vice president, national vice president, whatever it's going to be. That is what I'm going to do. I'd love you to come along with me on this. I think you'd be amazing at it. If it's something they want to do, then get them into activity and ask them what they think they're going to be capable of. She said she did this with an area manager in her business who, again, similar to me, she wanted a 20,000 QV, had worked down of where it was going to come from. And um, when she worked up and then contacted everybody um, in this way, she then completed that month on a 56,000 QV um, and had a really engaged team. So, you know, it's very easy. They've got all these guys over here, which in my mind are doing nothing. You know, they're not doing anything. But, you know, I've probably checked in with them, but I haven't gone, look, this is what we are doing. We are creating a nation. Are you going to come on board with us? Because it's going to be amazing. And I really want to help you to do it. I haven't had those conversations with them. I've started to this week. Um, because you'll be, she said they might just really surprise you. So at the, at the beginning of every month, work bottom up. You know, look at who's in your organization. Contact them um, and, and get a gauge of what they're going to be doing, you know, for the month. Especially in, in light of the fact, you know, if, they, if you know, they know what you're doing, you're clear about your objections, uh, your objectives, sorry, then they can come on board with you and do this. You know, the perfect scenario is having everybody promoting at the same time. 
because it creates that massive momentum of QV. It creates everything happening at the same time. So everybody gets lifted up at the same time. Um, so tell them about, about it. Put your goals in line with your team so that you do get that growth where you're wanting to see it. Okay, let me just quickly have a quick scan of what she said here. Yeah, so don't put your expectation of other people. Um, don't you decide what they are capable of. And that's something that I'm guilty of all the time. I'm like, well, you know, we can get you into District Quo in the first month. You know, tell them what, what this business is tell them what you want to achieve, help them achieve and tell them how, what they need to do to get earning some money in this business. And it means that they are going to come up, you know, be out of kilter for a bit, let them know that. Um, but if you can get them there in a couple of months, it really is. And they, people around them start to see the success that they've been, you know, if they get to district manager in a couple of months, it really does build other people's businesses because she was saying, you know, people go, wow, you've only just been doing this a couple of months. How are you already at the first level of management? So it really does have a knock-on effect in every other area just by putting that real amount, huge amount of work in the business up front. Um, she said, you know, you've got to be the ones creating the energy. Um, and I completely get this. You know, I've up until now been very much like, well, you know, you can come on board and um, take it at your own pace. and um, it's completely up to you and there's no pressure and because that's what I wanted to hear myself when I joined the business but the reality of that is what